So starting out with atomic structure, uh, basically there's only a small number of things you really need to know about the atom. So I'm gonna keep this discussion rather brief. If you want more details about how the structure of the atom was discovered, your textbook has more on that. And I think the open sex physics textbook probably has more too. Chemistry resources are also good for learning more about atomic theory. Uh, but for our purposes, what we mainly need to know is that the atom consists of a nucleus and some electron orbitals. The nucleus uh, is, is at the center of the atom. It contains protons, which are positively charged particles, neutrons, which are no charge, neutrally charged particles. And then the electron orbits around that nucleus of protons and neutrons. Uh, the number of protons and neutrons in the atom is what gives the atom its identity, so to speak. So the hydrogen atom has one proton, um, and then all the other atoms have more protons and neutrons. Usually protons and neutrons come in equal numbers, but not always. Sometimes atoms can have more neutrons, and those are isotopes. So if you've, you know, maybe taken an earth science class or something like that, or maybe you've heard of radioactive dating, um, that makes use of relative populations of different isotopes and their rates of radioactive decay. And those isotopes are simply the same atoms, but with extra neutrons. Okay, so electrons in general, they orbit around the nucleus. And this simple atom here, some, I guess it's a heavy hydrogen that we're depicting, uh, has only one electron in only one orbit. But in general, atoms have more than one electron orbital and uh, different atoms have different orbital structures. So what does the, this idea of orbit mean? It just means that electrons can have different energies within the atom. Uh, electrons that are in higher orbitals, larger orbitals have more energy. And you can basically tell the um, electronic structure of an atom, you can use uh, its electronic structure to distinguish it. And that's how we kind of get at information in space like, what is a star made of? Or what is that gas cloud made of? So the electronic structure is basically like a atomic fingerprint. And the way that we measure this atomic fingerprint is by measuring the light emitted by the atom. So the energy levels, we can kind of make an analogy to a ladder. So just like a ladder has discrete steps and we can stand on any of those discrete steps, so too do atomic energy levels have discrete levels which are very specific energies at very specific spacings. And you can't step you know, between two steps on the ladder in the same way you can't have an electron between two energy levels in an atom. It can be in one energy level or another, but it can never be in between. So here I wanna make an explicit connection between these two um, representations of uh, electron energy levels because I'm gonna use them in the rest of today's discussion. So in the image of the atom on the left, we have one, two, three, four possible energy steps that the electron can be in for energy levels. And also my ladder has one, two, three, four steps. And here I've got the electron on the second step. So in both images, that's the connection between these two representations of energy levels. And in general, like I said before, as we go up the ladder, as we go out uh, into larger energy levels, the energy increases. Okay, the bottom level has a special name. This is called the ground level or the ground state. And everything above that is called an excited state. So every time the electron is above the ground level, it's in an excited state. So in this case, we have one ground level, and then we have one, two, three possible excited states in this atom. The electron can be in any of those states. But there's actually one more thing that can happen to the atom, which is we can rip it off of the atom completely. The electron can be removed. Uh, and in that case, it is outside of the entire energy structure. It's doing something else entirely. And the atom that's left behind, we call that an ion, a positive ion, because it has a positive net charge left behind when the original neutral structure, where every proton has an electron, is broken because the electron is gone. So the net charge that's left behind is positive. All right. So um, the reason I want to use this ladder um, analogy is because we can you know, look at different ladders 
just like we have different atoms, we have different ladders with different numbers of steps and with different spacings between those steps. And uh, when we look at electronic energy levels, they're not evenly spaced. So in general, the steps that are at the highest energies are closer together in energy and the gaps between steps at lower energies are much higher. All right, so let me take a quick poll. Um, electrons can move between these different states. So let's say that I start with this kind of peach colored atom in the one, two, the second excited state, and it transitions down, falls into the ground state. Does the electron in this scenario gain or lose energy? And I'm seeing the most votes for B that the electron in this case loses energy. And that's exactly right. So our, as we're going from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, our electron is losing energy 